have sent more devices before he died The man behind a string of deadly bombings in Austin has died after blowing himself up, as police tried to arrest him early Wednesday morning. The bomber, a 24-year-old white male who was from Central Texas, killed himself and injured an officer when he detonated a bomb inside his car as police surrounded him at a hotel on Interstate 35, just outside Austin, at about 2 a.m. Police zeroed in on the bomber after obtaining CCTV footage of him posting two packages at a FedEx office that intended to target people of color on Sunday night. Authorities are now warning that more bombs could still be out there because they do not know if the bomber posted more devices prior to his death. President Donald Trump, who was earlier criticized for failing to speak out over the shootings, tweeted, Austin bombing suspect is dead, on Wednesday morning. Great job by law enforcement and all concerned, he added. The bomber had gone on a three-week bombing spree, targeting black and Latino neighborhoods stretching back to March 2. The series of bombings killed two people and injured at least five others. The most recent package bomb detonated at a FedEx distribution center near San Antonio early Tuesday. Police still do not know the motive behind the attacks or whether the bomber had an accomplice but did say he wasn't previously known to law enforcement. Austin Police Chief Brian Manley said officers used CCTV, cell phone data, witness accounts and store receipts to track the bomber to the hotel north of the city. When officers arrived at the hotel, the man was sitting inside his vehicle and police called for backup before they attempted to make an arrest. As reinforcements were arriving the man left the hotel and police followed him. The suspect pulled off the city's main highway, forcing officers to confront him on a stretch of road leading onto the I-35 highway. Two Austin police officers were approaching his vehicle when he detonated a bomb. One officer fired at the vehicle and the other sustained a minor injury after being thrown back when the bomb went off. The bomber's death came just hours after CCTV footage emerged showing the suspect at a FedEx office in the south of the city. Images show the man wearing a disguise and delivering two packages to the store around 7.30 p.m. on Sunday. It appears he was wearing latex-style gloves at the time he posted the packages. One of the packages subsequently exploded on a conveyor belt at a FedEx sorting facility outside of San Antonio in shirts just after midnight on Tuesday. The other was intercepted at a facility near Austin Airport and was later confirmed to contain a bomb. Law enforcement sources told KUV that the tipping point in the investigation came on Tuesday at about 9 p.m. after the CCTV footage emerged. It led police to the suspect's home and allowed them to collect cell phone data that enabled them to track him to his hotel. Authorities also got information from Google and from the suspect's computer history that confirmed the suspect was looking at information on where to go to ship devices. It is not known if the suspect was planning to deliver a seventh device when police stopped him. Chief Manley said it is not clear why he tried to leave the parking lot of the hotel. The suspect has not yet been identified because he has extensive injuries. Once police have established his identity the man's next of kin will be informed before his name is released. Chief Manley has warned residents not to let their guard down yet, saying there was a possibility that more bombs had yet to be found. We don't know where this suspect has spent his last 24 hours and therefore we still need to remain vigilant to ensure that no other packages or devices have been left to the community, Manley said. The I-35 was closed off in both directions following the explosion and officers will remain on scene until their investigation has been completed. The series of bombings killed two people and injured at least five others, unnerving residents of Austin, a city of some one million people. The first incident occurred on March 2 when a package bomb exploded at a northeast Austin home, killing a 39-year-old Anthony Steffenhaus. Two more package bombs then exploded further south on March 12. Draylon Mason, 17, was killed and his mother was wounded after they opened a package in their kitchen. A 75-year-old Hispanic woman named by family as Esperanza Herrera was severely injured when a package bomb exploded at her home a few hours later. On Sunday, two white men aged in their 20s were badly injured when they triggered a near-invisible tripwire linked to another explosive device. A female employee was wounded at a FedEx facility in San Antonio just after midnight on Tuesday when a package exploded while moving between conveyor belts. The package had been posted from a FedEx office in the Austin area and was addressed to a home in Austin. Hours later, a bomb was discovered at another FedEx facility near Austin Airport but was found before it detonated. The package was posted from the same address in Austin as the one that exploded earlier in the day. The first three devices were parcel bombs dropped off in front of homes around Austin neighborhoods. 
the series of bombings bewildered law enforcement officials, who by Sunday began taking the unusual step of publicly calling on the bomber to get in touch and explain why he was carrying out the attacks. Authorities had initially believed the bombings may be hate crimes because the first two victims were black but they backed off that theory after Hispanic and white victims from different parts of the city were also affected. President Donald Trump had earlier been criticized for his silence over the bombing spree given most of the victims were from the city's historically black and Latino neighborhoods. Unlike other attacks, such as the Pulse nightclub shooting in Florida, which Trump was quick to label an act of terrorism, the president initially remained silent about the Austin bombs.